Although linear regulators might be very easy to use, especially with this voltage regulator ICs, it became even easier. But this ease of use comes at a price. Linear regulators are well known for lower efficiency. The alternative is a buck regulator, which is a switch mode regulator, meaning as the name says, there will be a switch in between the input voltage and the load. Now the switch is turned on and off at a high frequency. Now suppose the switch is turned on for 50% of the time, which is technically known as the duty cycle of the switch. The voltage or the average voltage to be more precise in the load will also become 50% of the input voltage. But the problem is it will be a square wave instead of a nice and clean DC. Solution is an inductor and a capacitor. When the switch is turned on, the inductor and capacitors are charged and when switch is off, they discharge through the load. So at load, there would be a steady flow of energy. One more problem is to be solved. When the switch is suddenly turned off, the circuit is broken, but the inductor will try its level best to keep the current continue to flow. Because inductors don't like to change the current, as the capacitor don't like change of voltage. As a result, a voltage with opposite polarity will be developed across the inductor, which can go as high as up to a few kilovolts, which can easily damage the switch or other components in the circuit. This is solved by connecting a diode, which will remain at cutoff during the time the switch is on, and it will conduct when the switch goes off, thus allowing a path to flow the freewheeling current. Since the microcontroller of Arduino, that mil 328 p has three independent timer counters built in along with PWM pins, we can use any of the timer to generate the PWM signal necessary to drive the switch without disturbing the other codes being executed by the processor. At first, I will make the circuit. I hooked up the IR2110 MOSFET driver in a breadboard. Although it's a high side, low side gate driver, but I can use only the low side input and output to drive a single transistor. I am connecting the VCC and ground. I am using this IRF9530 P channel MOSFET as the switching element. I could use the NPN bipolar junction transistor also, but MOSFETs are recommended due to their higher efficiency. MOSFET gate is connected to pin number 1 of IR2110. I will use this 47 micro Henry inductor coil and a 1000 microfarad capacitor. Here the inductor value is not that much critical, at least the circuit to function. But if you use a lower value of inductor, then you will notice a large ripple in the output. On the other hand, if you use a very large inductor, the output will be smooth, but the efficiency will be lowered. There are two modes of operation for a buck converter continuous current mode or CCM and discontinuous current mode or DCM. If the energy stored in the inductor could not get a chance to fully discharge and the switch turns on again while the freewheeling current is still running in the circuit, it will be called CCM operation because here the current is always flowing through the inductor. This causes a significant power loss in the freewheeling diode. That is why it is always recommended to design a buck converter to operate in DCM. From this equation, you can estimate up to how much load the converter will operate in DCM for a particular value of inductor. And the capacitor should be chosen so that the cutoff frequency of the LC low pass filter, which can be calculated from this equation, should be much smaller than the switching frequency. Then plus 5 volt and input signal ground. Now, since this particular IC is designed to handle in channel MOSFETs, its gate signal will be low when there is no input signals available, but this will undesirably turn on the P channel MOSFET. To avoid this issue, I am using a 1 kilo ohm pull up register and a small NPN transistor to invert the input signal. For better safety, a 100 kilo ohm pull up register is attached to the gate. Lastly, adding this 22 kilo ohm and 10 kilo ohm voltage divider to feed back the output voltage to the microcontroller. 
I am configuring timer 1 in first PWM mode to generate the PWM signal in OC1A pin or pin D9 in Arduino. Value loaded in the input capture register ICR to get the switching frequency of 40 kilohertz. In the loop, the output feedback voltage will be measured at analog pin A0 and the duty cycle will be increased by increasing the value in the output compare register 1A if the feedback voltage is less than the set voltage and vice versa. I am setting the reference voltage, it is not the voltage to be correct, it is the ADC reading to 320, it should give the output voltage of around 5 volt. After making connections between Arduino pins and breadboard, I uploaded the code, turned on the input voltage which is a 12 volt battery in this case. As you see the output voltage is 5.08 volt which is very close to what I expected. This is without any load. Now I am connecting this 12 ohm register as load. The voltage is dropped only by 0.01 volt which is pretty much acceptable. With 10 ohm load the voltage is still at 5 volt. Although the voltage regulation is ok, but I noticed a large overshoot and undershoot in the output voltage while the load is being changed. This is because I am increasing or decreasing the duty cycle at a constant rate to correct the output voltage. This can be easily solved by implementing a proportional control action. That is the duty cycle will be incremented or decremented by a value proportional to the error voltage. Here the error voltage means the difference between the reference voltage and the output feedback voltage. Now as you can see the voltage is much stable while I am connecting or disconnecting the load. To calculate the efficiency of this buck converter I have connected a smaller multimeter which will show the input current. My battery voltage is 12.5 volt. With 12 ohm load, the efficiency is coming around 90%. With 10 ohm, the efficiency is 89.3%. At higher load resistance though, the efficiency is not that good. But that is not a problem as the total power wastage in this case is not of any significant amount. For fun, I tried adding a rotary switch to change the output voltage and an LCD to display the output voltage and the set voltage. It also worked fine. For simplicity, I have used here a P-channel MOSFET, but the P-MOSFETs have higher drain source resistance and lower switching speed in compared to N-channel MOSFETs. Also, the short key diode has a cut-in voltage of around 0.2 volt. It will also start heating up at higher current. So, the efficiency and the overall performance of the DC-DC buck converter can be improved by using 2 in channel MOSFETs in high side low side configuration instead of the P-channel MOSFET and the short key diode. For today's video, I would conclude here. Please like this video if you like it and subscribe my channel. I will meet you in the next video.